So we were looking through the corn and some of our corn has come ripe and I thought it'd be a great opportunity, great timing for us to try for the first time ever to pressure can corn. I'm excited, I'm nervous, let's do this. Look what we found. It was raining and he found a nice little home for himself. He's a sweetie. So there's a few things that you want to look for when you're harvesting your corn. The silk should be dry, good and dry, and it, the cob should feel full. And then, depending on your particular variety, what color it is, you can pull it back and see if it's the color. This one is a yellow variety, so this one's pretty much ripe, good enough. It'll also have, like, be rounded, as opposed to an underripe one will have, like, a little point on it. So this is our cafe corn. It's a little bit ahead of our other corn. We're still waiting. Well, some of these ones, actually, that's still the cafe, isn't it? The last few rows are our allure corn. So I'm just going to do... I like to pull the first couple... Um, I like to pull the outer husk off a little bit because that's usually where the um, earwigs and those will hide. And I don't like bringing them into the house. So I husked the corn, I put it into a pot of water so it could be rinsed, um, and now I'm cutting it off the cob. Now I do have this tool, out of all the corn tools I have used, this is probably my favorite, but I have to say a knife is still my favorite. So I haven't blanched them. Depending on what I'm going to do with them, I guess I'll blanch them afterwards. Um, for the ones I'm going to freeze, I'll be blanching them. For the ones that I'm just canning, I'm not going to blanch them. So I haven't tried this corn cooked yet. We tried it raw the other day and it was delicious, absolutely delicious, because it was just starting to ripen up. I think it was about at this stage here. And we tried it fresh and it was just wonderful. It's called Cafe. And we grew another corn as well. It's not quite ripe yet. It's just starting to come ripe. And that one was Allure. So I'll be interested to see the difference. Both are hybrids. My husband likes hybrid corn. So I'm excited and a little nervous. I've never pressure canned corn before. I've only ever frozen it. So it's a new skill that we're learning today. So when I was bagging the corn, I noticed it took about three, co three cobs to get a bag full. So I'm guessing that it's going to probably be about the same for the jars. You want to put the lids on there for a minute? I got my right hand helper helping me today. He's behind the camera and he's here to assist me. Okay, we'll start with that. So we have our lids just sitting in some just warming up some water. You don't want it to come to a boil, you just want to soften the seal a little bit. 
when I'm doing jam and other canning, I normally don't do this step, but because I'm pressure canning, I'm going to follow this rule this time. So I'm just going to see how many cups fits in a jar. That was one. I figure two, yeah. So we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt to each jar. I'm just using Himalayan pink salt. And now we're going to add our hot water. And you want to leave a one inch head space. but the liquid should be covering the corn. So there's a proper tool that you can use, but any plastic utensil, I could have used a plastic knife. I'm just gonna make sure all the air bubbles are out. Corn's covered and that we're at one inch. So you want to wipe the rim so you don't so you get a good seal. lid on. Tighten just to hand tighten. So now we gotta husk some more and do some more and we'll come back when it's all done and ready to go in. So a couple of things I thought I would mention quickly. Um, you have to check your gasket ring and make sure that it's pliable and it doesn't have any cracks in it. Um, this one has been used for a while and still is great. So. You will know if uh, your gasket ring is gone when you are using your pressure canner. If the steam still continues to come out through the lid, um, then you know that you need a new gasket and it's not going to work. Steam will come out at first, I'll show you on the video, um, until pressure is reached and then it will stop coming out. And if it keeps coming out, then you know you need a new gasket ring. Another thing I want to mention is that you want to make sure that this doesn't have any um, debris or gunk in it that will keep the steam from coming out. So one way is you can look through it and you can see that you can see the light on the other side or you could stick a, um, a wire brush through and clean it out but I can see that it's clear. So I forgot to show, but we filled the canner with two to, between two and three inches, I think it was about two and a half inches of water, and then I put my jars in. Obviously the jars have made the water go up, but you want to fill it first. Um, mine is a Miro, and that's the amount of water that it requires. You should check your manual and see what yours requires. I was hoping to get a few more jars, but um, we didn't have as much ripe corn as I thought we did. So this will be enough for my trial run anyways. You want to still give a good space between the jars, but I could have probably fit another two jars in here. So we're just going to put the lid on. We've had this on low. Um, they've slowly been, the water's been warming up and the jars have kind of been warming up a little bit as I've been filling them and putting them in. And now we're going to put the lid on and I'll show you the rest. So quick note before I put the lid on, I just remembered um, I was looking all over for my um, safety lock. Um, this little red button is not the safety lock. This is uh, your safety mechanism. If there's too much pressure, um, this will blow out. But this doesn't rise, it just stays there. So I was looking and looking and I'm like, mine doesn't have one. And then I was looking on forums and it took me a long time to find it, so I'm gonna add it to the video for that reason. You can't see it from the outside. It's it's right here, and there's a little 
as you can see it's inside the handle. So I'll show you how you can tell when that is locked as we're doing the video. We've just put the lid on, we're going to slide it over so that the handles meet. Now we're going to turn up our heat. We're going to turn it up pretty high to begin with because we want this to come to venting as quickly as possible. So I don't know if you can see it in the video, but what I was talking about is before it seals, you'll be able to see some steam coming out by the handle. And now, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you should be able to see it. Um, it started venting, so now we have to time 10 minutes from when it's venting. I don't know if you can see it in the handle there, but they mechanism in the handle for the safety lock is located right around there. So I'm following the Bernardin book and it says for raw pack, which is what we did, we're supposed to, for the 500 milliliter jars, it's supposed to be 10 pounds of pressure for 55 minutes. But I am higher than 1,000 feet above sea level, so um, I have to put on 15 pounds so this has been venting, we timed for 10 minutes, we're just a little over. This is our, if you can see that 15, right there. So I'm going to just put this over top. And now when it starts to jiggle, then we'll start timing. So I'm sure you can hear the hissing. You can see it's jiggling. I have to say this was probably the most intimidating part for me um, of pressure canning was knowing if I had this jiggling, hissing, rocking thing happening enough times a minute. So obviously this is pretty constant. I uh, did a test run the other day and I'm going to turn down my heat. So we had it on high pretty close to high. And I did a dry run the other day and I found that right around there was the right level for our stove. So I would suggest that you kind of do a dry run for yourself because if it falls below pressure, Stop jiggling altogether. You'll have to start your time all over again once it reaches pressure. So with me doing my dry run, that was about the right level for it to calm down. It's going to take a little bit. And it should do something, whether it rocks, spins, um, any of those motions. It should do it three to seven times a minute, they say. So I hope I'm doing this right. It turned down the heat because it seems to be jiggling constantly. And I've got my clock here. I'm just going to count the jiggles. So that's one. Two. seems to be about the right spot there. So I'm finding I'm having a hard time finding the perfect spot um, where it just has between three and seven jiggles a minute. Um, I turned it 
down a bit, and then I was getting about two to three jiggles a minute. I turned it up just a hair, and I was getting continual jiggling. So I turned it just a hair down again. So I don't know if it's because it's on a propane stove that I'm having a hard time, or if I'm just not waiting long enough. Anyways, if anybody has any help for me in the comments, um, I'm hoping when it drops to two jiggles a minute, I don't have to restart my time. I didn't. Um, I'm figuring that it was still at the right pressure because it was jiggling at all. So, and it was at that for uh, only a couple minutes. So, anyways, if anybody knows, let me know in the comments. I'm hoping to have confidence in eating what I'm making and that I'll have many years of pressure canning ahead because being off grid, that is our best solution. Anyways, in the meantime, I'm sticking close by so I can kind of monitor it. And so, we are making lunch. Well, actually, we're just reheating lunch because my wonderful friend Corinne came by and dropped us off lunch. Um, which was fantastic because I wouldn't have had time to make lunch today. So we've got some rice and have some dal. So I'm excited. It's all warmed up and we're going to be eating soon. In the meantime, I'm keeping an eye on our first So as you can see, it's back up to being rocking quite a bit. So lunch is ready and you can hear the timer. Our 55 minutes are up. So now we just have to wait to see on the handle the little safety has to drop before we can take the lid off. Now we do. Oh, and before we take the pressure off, do not take this off. Yes. So while we were eating our yummy dinner, the lock disengaged. We're now able to open it so it's not locked anymore. So we're going to take our weight off so we can remove that. So now we're going to open the lid, always wanting to open away from us. Pretty steam. Charge are still boiling. So I don't know if you can see that, but the jars are still boiling inside. Um, and I didn't have to worry. Oh, there goes the first one. I didn't have to worry about running out of water for sure. I was kind of worried because there for a while it was kind of vigorously jiggling and they said you can lose too much steam and it might run out of water while it's boiling. Well, we got lots of water still in there. There goes another one. So now I'm going to carefully remove the jars. You want them to remain upright, so you don't want to tilt them. You want to put them on a cloth or a paper towel and set them down carefully without tapping each other. I'm leaving lots of space so that they can cool. And most importantly, so they don't tap as I'm putting them down. All right, that's it.